Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with Cougars Athletic Director Pat Chun. And Pat, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on Athletic Director of the Year, first year at Wazoo. Um, some thoughts on, on, on that first year and really in getting that, that nice award. Uh, first of all, thanks for having us, Paul. It's uh, really humbling, uh, but really the nice piece of it is uh, I, I look at it from two lenses. One, it's a wonderful reflection of our student athletes, coaches, and staff, uh, the hard work, their commitment uh, to being the best they can be and representing Washington State every single day. And uh, we know how important the Cougs are to our alums and to our supporters. And two, I think it's a wonderful re reflection of our president, uh, Kirk Schultz. Uh, Bill Moose, my predecessor, is, is still will always be a part of the fabric of Washington State. And uh, when we left, that was that was that was tough on. A lot of people at Washington State, but uh, uh, Kirk at his last institution hired someone that won the same award, and uh, I think it's just a nice reflection that, hey, this is why Kirk is so well respected in higher education and what he does in college athletics, because he seems to find people not just in athletics, but that fit the institution as a whole. Well, I think as an athletic director in the Pac-12, you have your own challenges, and I want to get to those in a few. But but let's talk about a night with Cougar football as well. Uh, Bellevue Hyatt, Saturday night, um, sold out. Seems to always be sold out. Yeah. It's a popular event. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Well, if you want to make a big donation, it's not sold out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Say that right there. <laughs> right in that camera. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, it's, these are fun nights for us. We do one in uh, Portland, Vancouver area, one in Spokane, one in the Tri-Cities, and this one. And this was uh, typically our biggest one and uh, it's just fun for for this time of year to be in March uh, to talk about football spring ball is going to get going here pretty soon and uh, you know we take great pride in our football program we're one of those institutions that uh, you know our self-esteem is impacted by the quality of our football team and what we've done and obviously we've had a great run here under coach Leach and he's committed to being at Washington State and it's been a wonderful fit so uh, it's a, it's just a fun night of celebrating everything great about being a Coug everything great about Washington State we got so much to celebrate with 11 wins college game day showing up uh, what Gardner Minshew did, having uh, Coach Leach won National Coach of the Year and Pac-12 Coach of the Year. Uh, so it's just, just going to be another fun night of, for, for Washington State Athletics. Well, you bring up Mike Leach, so let's get right to it. What, what's it like dealing with him on, a, on an everyday basis? Well, what you see on TV is is real. I mean, he he is the most interesting man alive. Uh, but I think the thing that has really struck me the most is how caring he is. Uh, you know, there's a reason why he wins at such a high level, and uh, you can only do that if you have a deep care and deep love for your student athletes and your coaches, and uh, that's what Mike does really well. So it's been fun to work with. I've learned a lot. Uh, he's a hall of, he's a future Hall of Fame head football uh, future Hall of Famer in college football. Uh, uh, and we're fortunate to have him at Washington State. Well, I know you're, you, you're fortunate to have him. I look at my, my, my notes here because I have to read this. This is a quote from you. We're fortunate that mo we have the most revered scientist in football wearing a headset on Saturdays in Pullman. A revered scientist. That's a, I don't know if I've ever heard anybody refer to him like that. What do you mean when you say that? Well, he just takes a different look at any problem and how he, and how he gets to the equation to make it work is pretty unique. He was just invited to speak at the uh, Sloan Sports Analytics Conference at MIT, uh, Michael Lewis, who Wrote Moneyball interviewed him for about an hour, so that's that's his mind, and that's where the genius is. Is he is a, he just looks at situations, problems uh, with a whole different lens, and and that's that's what makes the air raid so special, and that's what makes him uh, such a master coach. But he is, and he's a lifelong learner. Football doesn't define who he is. I mean, he he really takes a summer uh, to learn different things, and it's interesting how those things impact him and what he does, and how he deals with people, and how he deals with situations. When you're you're in his office and you see the painting, uh, the the Costanza yeah. painting. With it. <laughs> Maybe the only questionable thing to come out of game day was that thing, because that, that thing has taken a life of its own. Yeah, but it's like one of those, it's like a one of the things you, you just you're mesmerized by it and you have no idea why. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but how do you keep a straight face when you go in there? You don't. You don't. <laughs> Actually, now I try to make it a point. I just get right to the point of what we need to talk about before I even like like even start to look at that picture. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the basketball program. Uh, you know, Ernie Kent is there. Do you feel pressure as the athletic director with the last of lack of success they've had uh, in recent years? Is there pressure to make a change? Uh, you know, the only pressure is to make sure our student athletes are are. are getting what their works deserve at the end of the day and, and having the type of basketball program that all of our alums want. So uh, we're all disappointed where we're at with basketball. I would say Ernie's probably the most. Uh, I get a little bit different. You know, my, my view of the program is a little bit different because I get under the hood. Uh, you know, I don't question Ernie's commitment to Washington State. I don't question his energy or his work ethic. Uh, he cares about his guys. I actually think he does, a he does a really good job.
job uh, off, off the court with those guys. It's just for whatever reason, the results haven't been there. Uh, we have a big opportunity at the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, I think everyone will, anyone who studies college basketball you know, knows that the Pac-12 is uh, not as deep as it has been in the past, and really it's anyone's tournament to win. And uh, I believe in the talent level we have. We got a couple of Seattle kids, and most notably C.J. Ellaby, uh, who's been a difference maker for us. And hey, if we can get, get in the ni nice rhythm and uh, uh, get the ball rolling in our favor in Vegas next week, you know, crazier things have happened. Well, they, they have played better basketball of late, so we yeah. got to say that. But, but at some point, you know, you think as, as Ernie Ken is a great coach, sometimes it doesn't matter. All the great coaches have a run, you know what yeah. I mean? So, you know, there's a question of you know, how, when, how long will this run last for Ernie Kent? So it's, it's, it's not a knock on his character at all. No, and we're all committed. Ernie's committed. The president's committed. I'm committed. Uh, we will do what's best for Washington State basketball. And uh, there'll be a time and a place to have those discussions with Ernie. Uh, but right now, I mean, I have a deep amount of respect and care for that team. There are a bunch of young men who do things the right way. Uh, academically, they're sound. I think that their highest GPA ever last semester. Uh, no off-the-court issues. There are a bunch of really quality young men. Uh, so my focus is really, hey, how can I support you guys this last couple weeks of your season? And, hey, let's get after it in Vegas. I think it's great you bring that up um, because I don't think there's enough emphasis on academics. And to have that, you know, people don't, they're looking at the wins and losses, but they don't see what's going on behind the program. And a lot of coaches uh, take a lot of pride in the graduation rate. Yeah, and the, and you got, and everyone, and your listeners who have been to, or viewers who have been to universities and colleges and have degrees, uh, most of us have had uh, life changing experiences on campus. Uh, in reality, when you go to college, more of it is to figure out who you are than what you become. Uh, but at the end of the day, that academic piece is such a huge priority. Just from a system, standpoint we want competitive we want the most competitive young people wearing our jerseys you compete in the classroom you're going to compete in the weight room you'll compete in practice and the results will be there it's all process driven uh, and at the end of the day uh, no matter how the world changes the one thing that is not debatable is is uh, the impact of a college degree and it's really the one proven method that hey, if you want to change your socioeconomic status in this country typically education is your best route to do it that's true all right let's talk about uh, the facilities over there it was you want uh, you're looking at a new um uh, indoor football facility which would serve a lot of the programs yeah. over there but you're also breaking ground on a new baseball facility uh, so some things are looking up over there yeah big deal for us with baseball we have uh, uh, baseball's our, our oldest program probably our most storied program there's a time and a place where uh, when you talk Northwest baseball there was one school you talked about uh, our facility had fallen behind on the times uh, we believe in the coach we have but we got to give them some tools to be a little bit more successful baseball is a three baseball is a type of sport where you spend a lot of time in that facility so we're proud of the fact it was a $10 million project. It kind of languished for the last few years. Uh, we were able to get about $2 million uh, in new additional commitments. Uh, we could. It's really the first project we've presented to our Board of Regents where 100% of the uh, the funding is from private donations, either in cash or pledges. Uh, so to get that to, to get that going, we'll put a shovel in the ground in June, which will be big for us. And uh, the next phase for us is we're, we're actively now in the market trying to fundraise for an indoor practice facility uh, that's really going to impact our football, uh, soccer, track and field. Uh, uh, programs the most and baseball the most because uh, we got to be able to get inside during inclement weather uh, and even even as the world changes even during during August with uh, with the forest fires yeah. uh, with air quality so this is just the next phase all of our you know the modernization of Washington State athletics I will argue started when we did the uh, the football Martin Stadium renovations then you hire Mike Leach then you do the football operations building so there's a constant reinvestment that has to happen uh, in the sport of football and we're well aware of that uh, at Washington State yeah well so so the so the bubble is no longer the efficient over there. You guys got The bubble has outlived lived its purpose, <laughs> so it's it's time to move on from that bubble. Yes. We fool a lot of people on TV. It looks real nice, you yeah. know, through the, through the lens. Correct, correct. Like we had talked earlier, the the hefty bag can only <laughs> can only last for so long. <laughs> well, you're right. It's about time, and yeah. it's, you get so much use out of those indoor facilities, especially in that climate. Yeah. Um, but as an AD in the Pac-12, how are you dealing with uh, the shortcomings in the revenue develop, uh, you know, produced by the conference itself? Trying to come up with solutions. Uh, I, I, I know that every AD in the conference and all the presidents and our commissioner are, are all unified to try to do better as a conference and try to uh, lessen that gap. So we're, we're looking looking at things differently. Uh, our golden egg is that Pac-12 network that hasn't hatched. Uh, I know the presidents have approved our commissioner to go down a road to uh, to see if, if there's an equity partner that, that wants to take a piece of the network, and we'll see if that comes to fruition. Uh, but we got to take a deep dive because at the end of the day, uh, to do what we need to do in college, 
college athletics does take resources. It, 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 there's no debate to that, and uh, you know that's part of the reason why, why I'm here is uh, you know in the changes we've made at, at our athletic department, they've been all on the resource side. We've made changes in our fundraising staff, our corporate sponsorship, our branding and uh, marketing staffs. Uh, but this this the the shortfalls that we have uh, from our conference is, is a big deal, and, and we're looking to try to find some solutions. Man, I, could, I talked to Pat John all day, and I know the clock is just ticking. So, but I, w I do want to give you a chance to to praise the women's programs out there. The soccer team got off to such a great start, ranked nationally, um, and then they had a little bit of a skid, but did get to the to, to the NCAA tournament in the second round, I believe. A uh, volleyball team has really turned it around, fourth in the Pac-12, and then they they lose to the eventual national champion yeah. in the Sweet 16 in Stanford. So. You got some good things happening over there, and the, and the tennis team as well. Yeah, I, I tell everyone pr prior to Minshew Mania, heading into this year, f I would argue that five of our six highest profile student athletes coming back uh, were all women. Mm -hmm. uh, two in soccer, one in women's basketball, one in volleyball, one in tennis. And I tell everyone, how amazing is that? that in 2018, 2019, Washington State Athletics, uh, women have taken over. And that's just part and parcel with where the world's headed. So uh, we're proud of the fact that our women's soccer program was ranked in the top 10 at one point, and we hit some injuries, but still made the NCAA tournament, got a win. Our volleyball team finished 16th in the country. Uh, tennis is rolling, and we expect them to make NCAAs this year. Uh, women's basketball, we hit reset with a new coach. But uh, uh, it's, you know, I'm the father of three daughters, so it's pretty cool for me to have a, a bunch of role models uh, wearing our jerseys all through Pullman. And, uh, uh, these are some high, high achieving women. They kick butt in the classroom, kick butt in the weight room. They kick your in my butt. <laughs> anything. Yeah. So it's, it's, they're, they're, it's pretty awesome to be around that those type of young people. It's inspiring, actually. Well, listen, congratulations on athletic director of the year in your first year at Washington State. Washington State's very lucky to have this guy out there run the show in athletics. Thank you, Pat, and, uh, and best of luck in the future. And thank you, Ball Go Cougs. Right. <laughs>